Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was DTS in Kona, Hawaii. Okay, so what exactly is DTS? So for those who may not know what DTS is, the scientists are trained in school. And what you really learn here is the power of God. Has and a lot of people go, like me included, we go wondering what is our next path? Um, where was I? <laughs> Learn the power of God. And a lot of people like me go wondering what our path, what our next path, what our next life goal should be in terms of following God. But really what DTS does for you is as much as it shows you what you want to do in your next path in life, it shows you what kind of person you want to be in your life, what kind of person God has created you to be, and what kind of person you can strive to be when coming in terms of following Jesus every day of your life, learning what it means to evangelize, what it means to be a true follower of Christ, what it means to be a brother in Christ, a husband, a wife. All these things is what you learn in DTS. And what I found is something, a little backstory is, before I even started DTS, I actually hated going to church. For those who may not know, my dad's an elder at this church. And I actually hated going to church because I felt like I had this expectation to live up to, this expectation to be perfect, that if I did something wrong, that, some, that another person would text my parents and then they'd come back and reflect on me. And I felt so trapped and so insecure that when I eventually went to college, I got stuck in the traps of doing weed, smoking, drinking, all these things were part of my life. And coming from a hard time, I continued to do these things. And even as I went to DTS, I didn't really go because I felt like, oh, I had this passion to follow God. I went, at, I went there to escape my life. I went there to escape, to have a fresh start. But even as I went to DTS, the first two months, I still had, this, I, I still had the same problems. Even my roommates included, they were still drinking within my roommates. They were still smoking within my roommates. There was even weed within the, within the students. And you think, wow, they're going to Bible school, but they're still doing all these horrible things like drinking and smoking. Like, why is this happening? And honestly, to tell you, it's because we feel like once we escape our past lives, that we feel like we could still do the same things and change. But what God showed me throughout DTS, learning through evan evangelism, and especially during a sermon from a pastor named Dan Bowman. What it showed me is who you are meant to be, your original design, what God has created you to be. And I learned what it meant to be a follower of Christ, what it meant to be, what it meant to be a part of a family, not just in terms of blood, but a family in Christ. And I found as going to, especially a Korean DTS, that I had struggles too. I, I ended up the first two months having no friends. I couldn't speak Korean at all. And everyone in my school only spoke Korean because they came from Korea. I had two American friends, but they were all older than me in the 30s and 40s. So I had no one to talk to. I had no friends. <laughs> and I felt really trapped. I, I'm the, I was the youngest one in my DTS. I'm only 19 year old, year, years old right now, but I was the youngest in my DTS. And I felt like I, had, I didn't know what I had to do. I, was, I didn't have a place. I didn't have a purpose. So as I continue to go to DTS, I truly found what it meant to be as a follower of Christ, that it didn't matter what my age was, it didn't matter what background I came from, it didn't matter from where I started, but what mattered was the present. What mattered is what I can do to turn my life around, what I can do to be the man of God that I strive to be, what I needed to do to be that follower, to be that person I wanted to be. And for those who don't know, once you go to DTS, you also have to do outreach. So next slide. So I traveled for two days, and with 14 teammates, including me, we went to Vanuatu. <laughs> and what Vanuatu is, it's an island near the Solomon Islands in Fiji. And next slide. And this is my team. We're named Wuhana. So in Hawaii, in the Samoan term, Wuhana is family. And we turned the word Wu as a Uri Hana, which translates to Korean, so we are one. So we are one team and one family. So what we strive to be is one team, one family, and one purpose. And what you can see in these pictures is us doing street ministry and children's ministry. We actually did children's ministry at Tioma Christian Academy. And I learned a lot going to outreach, that it was a hard time. It wasn't, it wasn't something that I just went to to have fun. Although it was fun to be around everyone, I learned the struggles of what it was like to live in Vanuatu. As much as it was more of a city setting, I learned what it meant to grow up not knowing who your father was, not knowing who God was. And everyone in Vanuatu knows who God is, but they don't actually know in their heart. They don't really believe in God. They know about Him, but they don't know Him as a friend, as a father. 
And as a person, you can walk with side by side. It's the next slide. And you can see, there's a little video of us doing our worship. If you can, you can play it. <laughs> And as you can see in the picture on the right, you can see at the bottom, that's the missionary there. He's from New Zealand. But one thing that was struggled the hardest is they only speak English. And my entire team is Korean. So I'm the only English speaker, right? So by the grace of God, I learned Korean in three months during my lecture phase. And I was able to translate for them almost perfectly around 90%. But Honestly, it was all thanks to God that I didn't really have the intention of learning Korean. I didn't have the intention of <laughs> making friends or even following God at the start. But as I went to Vanuatu and I translated for them, even through translation, I learned what, what God's purpose was in terms of learning a different language, sharing the gospel and what people's hearts were through translation. And we spent our first month there in Port Vila, Vanuatu, and then... <laughs> and then these are the kids during our children's ministry. And actually, um, next slide. We ended up flying to another island called Santo in Vanuatu. It's kind of like Hawaii where there's multiple islands. We ended up flying to Santo. And what we're doing there is we met a Korean ministry and it's called Santo Bush Mission. And if you go into the next slide. And what we do in Santo Bush Missions is we go up to the mountains to different, to different villages around two, two hour hikes, three hour hikes, going up to villages. And it's kind of spreading the gospel, spreading who God is because Different from Port Vila, where it's more of a city setting, in the mountains, no one really knows who God is. They don't have Bibles, they don't have proper food, they don't even have proper living spaces, and they don't even have proper clothes to wear. And you can even see here in all these pictures, that's us climbing the mountain. <laughs> but um, you can even see that as we go to these mountains, we learn the struggles of what it's like to live there. That what we walked in those two or what in those eight hours that they do every day in their lives, that they do every day trying to find food and even just eating. I had to eat their food for around two weeks, but I didn't eat. I think I ate the same thing for five days straight. <laughs> and we had rice and then we had ramen and that was all we had for five days. And I didn't have anything to eat and I was starving and I didn't know what to do. And I fell into this depression state where I didn't know where to go. And even after I came down from the first mountain that we went to, I came down realizing and finding out that my grandpa had passed away two days before. And that hit me hard, that I had to go up to the mountain three days later. And where was I stuck at? I was stuck in this state where I didn't know where to go from there. That with my grandpa's death, what was I supposed to do? To, what was I supposed to do with this? Holding on to this feeling, holding on to what it was like to feel this death and not even be there, not even knowing where his grave is, because he ended up giving his body away to, hot, to a medical school. So I didn't have a grave to even see him. I didn't even get to say a final goodbye. And I was supposed to even fly, back, fly out to Korea even after DTS. I didn't get all these opportunities, and I felt like it was such a waste of my time, that I was here for no reason, that why would God call me here? And at one point, I even, I even, I even contemplated with myself on just going back home, going back to Korea, going back to America, and just being there for the rest of the time, going off my everyday school. But God ended up calling me. He ended up calling me to stay. Then he ended up showing me Mark 4, 4, Mark 4, verse 17, where it states, where it's the story of where he plants seeds in the rocks, where he plants seeds in different valleys. And in 17, it states in the rocks that there's gonna be struggles, that there's gonna be temptations, that it's not gonna be easy, and some people fall away. And if you read that plainly, you may not exactly know, like, what? People fall away? Like, why is that important to me? But as you read through it all, and you read the whole chapter of Mark 4, Mark 4 
and that you understand that as he plants you, as he walks with you every step of the way, whether it be through rubble, whether it be through a nice valley, or whether it be through struggles, that he's holding your hand every step of the way, that he's walking with you every step of the way. If you want to go to the next slide. Oh, you can play that too. <laughs> um, this is us going down the mountains, going through mud, going through rocks, climbing mountains. So this... <laughs> you can go to the next slide. <laughs> and going here, I found what it meant to be, what it meant to be to really be one body with my team, what it meant to be one body with not just my team in general, but the people of Vanuatu too. That you can see that in the top right picture, we started on a mountain, building a church on top of a mountain. We started with that, and in one day, we leveled out the whole thing. There's no cranes, there's no tools. We had a chainsaw, and that was the only power tool we had, and that was to cut tools, and that was to cut wood. And you can see those pillars too. One of them is around 100, 175 pounds, carrying through three and a half miles of mud, of dirt, of rocks, in the rain, in the wind, in the thunderstorm, and everything. We're carrying those here to build a church, to build one body, that we found that working together as one team, as one family, we found out what it was like to one, live, as, live like the people of Vana too, and also connect with them on a deeper level. That yes, we, it felt like we were just working hard, and I even spent my birthday up there, <laughs> turning 19, carrying wood, and going through mud, and it wasn't easy, to say the least. But I found that what I was able to do during my time there was touch the hearts of people. That they touched my hearts as well, showing me all that they had, their lives, what they went through, telling me their stories, pushing through it, that even if they get hurt, there's no medical service to come help them. That they just deal with it, they move on. But one thing that they showed me is the power that they have the glory that they find when even though they get hurt, even though they fall down, even though they don't want to keep going anymore with this lifestyle, that they find and look up to God, that these people in the land, up in the mountains, showed me what it was like to be not only just a follower of God, but be able to hold God's hand, be his best friend, come with him every step of the way, knowing what he has in store for me, knowing what he has planned for me in my life, that it's not just my life, that I'm going through, but it's my life with God that I'm going through. Next slide. <laughs> and you can even see us holding those wood planks as one of my teammates. One of those is around like 50 pounds, I think, carrying it alone. And we're at, right here is where we're building the missionary, missionary's house because they didn't have one built yet, so we had to go up there and build it. So we were living in the chief's house with his family alongside them. You can go to the next slide. You can see us going through going through the mud, up, and we actually made paths, but they're really slippery because of the mud, and you can see us carrying each one. And one of the fun things is volleyball is the main sport in Vanuatu, so you even played it on the mountains. And you can see my team up there in graduation. You can go to the next slide too. And that's my small group on the left, and then you can see my team on the right. But as much as they're from Korea, and as much as my team and I went through hard struggles, the pain of what it was like to go through living in Vanuatu and the glory we even found there being followers of Christ just going that I found in DTS that the God that I found the God that I became to know was not just my best friend not just my God not just my father but it was someone I could hold on to someone I can trust someone I can keep going with every step of the way through my life that even through the hard paths of my life, even through the glory days of my life, even through the happiness and the sadness, the depression and the, and the happiness, that I found that the God that I love, the God that I care for, and the God that I found was someone I can trust, I hold on to with my hand, that he'll, that he'll carry me through. And at the end of that road, at the end of that path, will be something great, that he has something to show me, that he has something wonderful at the end of it, through it all. And at the end of our lives, the end of it all, that we get to be able to be with Him up in heaven in the glory and eternity. So as I found that in DTS, as you guys have already heard from Pastor Matthew, that I'll be going back to Hawaii this Wednesday morning. I'll be going back to Hawaii to do staff training for Rising DTS, which is the Korean DTS, the new generation Korean DTS 
from eight, for ages 18 to 34. And I'll be training to be able to serve there as a leader, be able to be a mentor, a small group leader. And although I may, be, I may not be old in terms of age, but I know in my heart spiritually that I'm ready and that I know that whatever God has planned for everyone in this room's lives spiritually, that you guys will be ready. That it's not what can I do, but what do you have planned for me? What do you have that I'm ready for? That I'm ready for whatever you throw at me to go into my life, to keep going. That whatever you throw at me, whatever comes at me, that I'm ready. That my stronghold in you is so strong that I will not fail. I will not fall down in all this. So, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Thomas, thank you so much. Um, you know, six months ago, his parents sent a uh, very, how would I say it, um, a, a young, young kid, uh, aimless without too much purpose, to Kona, took a, a, a big investment chance and etc. And six months later, God brought back a young man, mature, spiritually, um, stronger and now even more fired up for the gospel and and wanting to return back to uh, give back for what he has received as a staff as a mentor and so uh, glory to the Lord amen. amen thank you thank you Jesus for for Thomas and um, what was once a, a doubting Thomas is now a full believing, <laughs> uh, faith-filled Thomas. Would you join me in prayer as, he, yes. as we send him? Thank you, Lord, for Thomas's victorious testimony. Uh, this is uh, a remarkable thing that you're doing, Lord. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we heard from Joe how you have churned uh, Joe's life 180, uh, and you are also doing that for Thomas and continue to do them for both of them. Thank you, God, that you are working in the lives of our uh, teenagers and young men, uh, that you are turning people's lives around for the gospel. And we are uh, so pleased and thankful that we are part of the community where we could see your works being done. Yes. We bless our brother as he returns uh, to give back uh, the blessings that he has received and return to others that will benefit. God, we pray empowerment over Thomas. We pray, Lord, protection, uh, physical, spiritual protection, Lord, uh, that in this journey, there will be many temptations, many trials, and even uh, a points of giving up, falling away. But God, would you strengthen him? Yes. Would you, Lord, take hold of him? Um, and would you empower him to continue unwavering, unhinged, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.